Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe, Director Commentary, Street Angel's Dog. I'm Jim Rugg. My name's Ed Piscor. And today we're going to go through Image Comics' free comic book day issue from 2018 featuring Street Angel. This story, uh, to give a little bit of background, when I started doing Street Angel comics for Image, the first idea I had was the concept of this story, and I actually wrote and drew a version of it, wrote it with, with uh, partner Brian Maruka, and whenever I would finish stories, I would do some kind of a print so I could see them as a hard copy. So this was an edition that I made of 10. I just ran it off at like Office Max, but this is the first iteration, and you'll see it's very traditional, black and white, inked with you know brushes and pens like I normally would do, and some very similar... Uh, pieces that made it into the revised version that I did two years later, but then also some very big differences. And we'll get into those as we go through, but uh, this is just kind of a, a quick view of how much this thing changed and a little example of how it changed in terms of color. So this is a color ash can that I made, and you can see very different uh, different approach to color and even the art even the pages that are most similar. I might follow along with this with this one. And sure. whenever something, in, a big difference pops up, like we'll call it out and I'll ask you potentially why, why the change or whatever. Sounds good. Um, let's start with the cover. So I love this cover. One thing that I did with this comic, I got an email when I was in Denmark about doing the free comic book day issue. And I every year would ask, uh, Eric Stevenson to give me a free comic book day issue because I know it's a big readership. I love putting comics in front of new readers and I think free comic book day does that. So I got the uh, email from Image Comics that I could have a free comic book day issue, but the turnaround was pretty fast. I had just gotten an iPad uh, and an iPad and an Apple pencil and was starting to draw on it and, and trying to learn that a little bit. And I wanted to do an all digital comic. I had been coloring digitally. Um, I thought the iPad was a pretty impressive tool. So this was kind of like an opportunity a little bit faster than I planned, but this was a chance to like give it a shot. And basically I had like a week where I would experiment, start working on the iPad and see if I thought, okay, this will work because I didn't have enough time that if it didn't work that I, you know, I had like two months to produce this book. So when you uh, were in that practice mode, I have to imagine you had to do probably a lot of printing from the files that you did the practice drawings to see what it looked like on actual paper. Is that part of the process? It's part of the process. I mean, it was more drawing because then I could port the files to uh, Photoshop and I knew what those looked like. So, you know, I could use that kind of as my guide as well. I had done a couple of Street Angel books at that point with Image. So I had an expectation of what my files should look like. Um, it was mostly drawing and just seeing if I could uh, figure out how to actually use the Apple Pencil and, and get what I wanted. And so the first thing I did was this lettering, which was just playing around with different brushes. But I love it. It's one of my favorite parts of this. Yeah, I like it a lot, too. Um, it's trying different brushes, you know what I mean? Just, like, fooling around. Like, I probably had a 100 layers of just, like, trying different brushes and, and writing things and, and seeing how it looked, and eventually that title came out of that treatment where it was just, like, playing. And we're going to see more examples of that uh, throughout throughout this issue, too, is certainly when we start looking at some of the street graffiti and shit. First thing that jumps out at me, this dog is not that dog. Yes. Very cartoon version of a dog. That is something I thought about whenever I did this original version. I had pages and pages of drawing dogs, looking at cartoon dogs, looking at real dogs, and we went with a more realistic dog, but eventually, whenever it was time to redo this story, that was the last decision we made before I started drawing it, and it was like, let's try the cartoon dog. Let's go for it. You know, in my head, I'd been kind of thinking about it ever since I did this first run like a year before, and uh, I'm very happy to go with the cartoon dog. It was an idea I had from the beginning and didn't have the nerve to do it on the first one, but uh, did do it on the second one. So the color uh, palette here, did you use like, was it like watercolor brushes in, in Procreate? Oh man, you're really going to tax my memory on that one, Ed. It was, uh, I used the magic marker brush, which I think is under the inking tools, and then play with opacity and size. Uh, that was a tool that I did a lot of drawing with. I would do a little bit of pen, some of the pencil tools, um, technical pen, but those are probably the three most of the tools that I would use. My last note on the cover is, 
to me, this is an homage to Electra Assassin number one, one of my favorite comics and favorite images. Longtime kayfabe viewers will know uh, early on I put a call out for the poster version of that. Um, so it hangs on my wall now. But that's kind of something I think of as just like a very iconic figure. You know, try to capture the weight if she's holding this dog to show how much she loves it, even though it's heavy and hard for her to hold. And then uh, the usual ninja weapons to fill out her character and, and signs of uh, maybe a ninja star from a previous battle and possibly some blood from the wheels of the uh, skateboard. You have the weight of the character, like how the weight's distributed <clears throat> on this hip. Like you have that done really well. Like did you look at something or you just, you know, you you have your drawing chops down. Did your wife pose for that? <laughs> she did not. I'm sure I Googled people holding a baby, like like young girls holding a baby, because you do that, you know, like you've seen this pose. Totally. Anytime somebody's carrying a baby, especially for a while, and it starts to feel a little heavy. And then this space was a requirement of the free yeah. comic book day organization where stores could put their stamp or whatever. I would often do like a drawing there. So if you saw me, it would be a signature or a little street angel sketch or something like that. If it wasn't, you know, stamped or stickered by a store. Good approach. Good approach because uh, when you're designing these free comic book day uh, comics, it's like three inches by two inches. It's a big. Ch it's far bigger than the UPC code or something. Now you got to design around that, and I think you've accomplished that uh, pretty pretty great. I made some adjustments. Speaking of color, to this image, and this is the wrong file that actually printed. So. Uh, whenever we do the Street Angel Deadly Girl Live, I'll be replacing this with a slightly different uh, version, but mostly it's the same. You wouldn't notice if I didn't call it out here. So there's our dogs again. Yes. Two-page spread. Grab people's uh, imagination with that very first page turn, right? Were you looking at, like, Chuck Jones, Hanna-Barbera, like, th that kind of, did anything specific? Yeah, in case you can't hear me at home, guys, I'm shaking my head vigorously. Yes, exactly. I was looking at all that cartoon stuff. Cartoons have become more and more influential on me, so um, those are definitely references that I look at. And, you know, part of the reason we did the Street Angels dog story, part of the reason this was the first Street Angel story is it's pretty easy to, uh, I think most people will sympathize with a dog that's being chased and, you know, like everybody's an animal lover today. And so creating, like, Street Angel's first impression, which this free comic would be for a lot of people, this is an easy sell. Smart. We can all agree, rescue that dog, save that dog. The dog's in peril. And so uh, we get into th these first probably six or seven pages, almost exactly like the original story. And then things veer off quite a bit in the revision. But it's a dog running from a pack of kids, um, you know, horizontal movement, running, turning down an alley, and here, if you're a longtime Street Angel fan, you see a skateboard in the foreground popped, propped up against this dumpster, and now we cut inside the dumpster and we get her, her spill, you know, who she is and what she's doing. She's in there dumpster diving while this ruckus is going on outside, and finally the dog thuds against the, uh, against the dumpster, gets her attention, and she is off to uh, rescue this poor animal in need. Yeah, great two-page spread and very successful in in the color uh, of this thing. And and this is like sort of what I was saying. Like I, I could tell, man, you were testing some brushes out and to to great effect. Like no two graffiti pieces of writing should look the same, and you've always excelled at, at that. Yeah, it's very fun painting and working in color. And one of the great things with the iPad is you're doing both. Like you're drawing, but you're going back and forth between working in color and working in line and, and you know, fleshing that stuff out, which is pretty pretty nice. It's a very organic way to work if you're doing everything. Also, might I say, really fun character designs for uh, the little gang of hooligans here. Thanks, yeah. Warriors, I, I you know, I wear warriors on my sleeve as an influence. So anytime I have a chance to have like the colorful uh, group, it's always uh, always something that's in my head. And then this is a this is a thing I designed basically for digital version, digital readers, is if you look at this guy's nose right here, the exact same spot is the point of impact. So you have like all of these lines, the fist and the nose all converging in one spot. If you're reading this digitally, um, you're basically just screen refresh. So it's, it's, and I made an animated GIF online for this of impact point. So super zoom, sound effects, uh, half gutter, half sound effect, and then all motion. Genius. And you can, <laughs> you can see the prototype. Again, these are the, the ones that, that stuck. These are the ideas that I was happy with from the beginning. So you would take this in and then pro just trace it over uh, in Procreate, or did you use the pen and ink image here? I did not use a pen and ink image. 
I'm trying to think if I even brought any of this stuff in. I probably did bring this in as an under level. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember specifically, but I, I tend to, uh, I don't always do that. Like often if I have a sketch or if I have a reference, then I'll draw it fresh, even though in this case I may have done it because it is very precise with lining up between two spreads. Also super smart to take the lettering out of here, man, because, uh, because this uh, makes, it lingers a little bit longer than than I would want for some like it's like boom crack this fucker's nose let's keep rocking yes after after math so jump out punch him he falls down they take off running they are just a bunch of kids um and we're gonna see their reaction to Street Angel 2 you know like this was very much trying to build this character and one of the changes that we're going to start to get into, I realized this is the dog story. This is not Street Angel's story. This is a lost dog who's in trouble, and she's like a Batman or something that shows up to kind of like save this dog, help it out. But this becomes the dog's story more than it's Street Angel's story. She's almost a supporting character in, in this version as opposed to the original draft, and I think that works better. You want to show? We can show, like, here, here's one variation this bottom panel, you know, you can see that the, the main action is the same, but now we're doing a longer shot. And this whole page is different. Yeah, so this is the difference for the dog characterization. You know, in the original, the dog's super excited and, and back on its feet. Not so. This is a traumatized dog that was in a lot of trouble before Street Angel showed up to save it. Has a broken paw. So, cut to this church. Again, if you're a longtime reader, you may recognize this church from Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, issue number three. This is a church that is in Sharpsburg, which is a couple of neighborhoods from where I live, and it's just beautiful. I've, I've drawn it, I've photographed it, and I've put it in Street Angel twice now. So she goes to the church where she finds help for the dog's paw. And then, of course, they're back at it. Pretty much this is just Jesse's typical day, right? Looking for food and survival. And now she has a companion with her. She finds a bag of clothes. They play dress up a little bit. Get into tug of war over. Uh, he he's a little more successful at, at panhandling than she is. So of course she can't let that. That that's that doesn't sit well with her. I have questions about the the palette. Like when you were designing the the colors. Mm -hmm. um, like how did you make sense of them? Like how did you keep them on hand? Is there, were you able to create palettes like? in the program you use, or were you basically just eyeballing along the way? I do palettes now. Yeah. I think when I did this one, I think I was probably eyeballing, you know, so I would find colors that I like, like her coat is something that's consistent through several pages. Yeah. And I would just sample that, you know, to keep that alive. And then this is probably where I started to, to then make my palettes where it's like quit sampling every time and just make that a color, uh, which is easy to do in procreate. Um, so that's probably something that came about somewhere in the middle of this book. When, when the thing is in print, colors often change a lot. Uh, so if, if we get to a page where there's like, I would have done this differently or so, or, or vice versa, yes. I really like this color. Like you should call that out just for my own edification. Yeah, I definitely will. And, you know, talking about color and value, we go from this like dark scene to a light scene. Yeah. Like like she's delighted to have this dog in her life almost from the get go. It gives her this sidekick. It's Batman and Robin for her. You know she she's got a friend now to be with her. And so I did want the palette to bring that up. You know this is a she's thrilled by this dog. So we have sequences of trying to establish this rapport between the two, which is very different than the original draft nice thing of making a, dra a detailed draft is that then you can kind of like see what would you do differently, right? This was a, an early scene, or this is from the early draft, where she is with the dog. They're still looking for food, but it's handled much differently. Here they're at a donut shop, and there are police in the front. She's weary of police, so she sneaks around to get back behind them into the dumpster, the alley behind the donut shop, where she often finds the best uh, leftovers and stuff. When she comes back around, the dog's the opposite, complete opposite of her. This was an okay, fun scene, but it, it wasn't. It didn't quite nail the idea of like these guys are friends, they're having fun, um, they're bonding. You know, this is a day of adventure. So it's replaced here with her trying to make up to the dog and show the dog a good time. And what can she do now that she has a friend out on the road? The dog's still very catatonic throughout all of this. You know, we see just eyes wide open. Some of the stuff that she thinks is fun, like taking it on a uh, down the hill in a shopping cart, 
the dog doesn't think is very fun. The dog's terrible whenever she gets into her street angel fights with ninjas and stuff. The dog's just running away. More dress up, you know, maybe if she dresses the part, she'll be a little bit tougher. Um, doesn't exactly work that way, but happy accident. This is your cartoon, right? Mm -hmm. Running away, runs into a monster, street angel's thrilled. Uh, just looking at this draft, it's, what's real fun is we're starting to see cartoony dogs. So you started to, to go to that place. Here's what the pup looked like at yes. the beginning of the story. And then you started to solidify how this pup should be treated. And then we get this iteration here, which there's a lot of thinking going on in this document here. Phase two, action and adventures. So here's a little Easter egg, Abdullah the Butcher. <laughs> That's awesome. You have the classic, uh, you know, thinking of classic things for a cartoon dog to do. You would have the dog stealing the sausages and running down a sidewalk. In this case, it's Jessie stealing the sausages and running down a sidewalk. And who does she steal from? Abdullah the Butcher. You can see if you look closely the scars in his forehead and also the, uh, the iconic fork in his right hand as, uh, as he's yelling at Street Angel to get away. And it's just uh, a montage. But the montage, like she is consistently moving throughout the montage, but facing different things like a demonic car, an eyeball monster, um, that robot. I, I don't know if you've seen video of this. I head, have, yeah, with but the it's horse one legs. Of the yes, one of the, like the robot dog military robots um, chasing her. And then this is where things start to change as she's skateboarding away and having fun. She loses control and crashes because of something that she sees whenever she passes this bar. And it's a very visual indicator that, like, there's a line being passed there. Even though that's a telephone pole, it's also a line. And uh, super great treatment with the sound effects. This is always, uh, this is something I absolutely learned from you, like, over the years, man, is just, like, incorporating the sound effects, like, in the actual composition. And, and this is a this is a Jim Rugg trope, if I've ever seen it, man. Like, a uh, really, really fun way to employ that lettering. Yeah, and I can nod some of this in Farrell Dalrymple's direction, a sure. cartoonist I'm a big fan of. Great lettering, great drawing all around, uh, but does some really fun lettering. So, yeah, you, you never, I never remember where I pick things up or get ideas from and who does what first, but uh, he's definitely somebody who I've looked at for lettering info. And now you see the things have changed. Like, they go from having this great day of adventure to a broken skateboard, broken faces, broken sidewalk. It's not good. And we finally turn the page and we see what she sees. It's a flyer for the lost dog. Uh, totally threw her off her game. It identifies the dog as named Princess. Jesse kind of recovers a little bit and goes over to this dog that looks like he might be dead and shakes her to life. The dog responds to Princess and snaps out of the catatonic state. You know, it finally recognizes it, it, it's a lost dog and now hearing its name sort of brings it back to life a little bit. Unfortunately, that kid gang is back with their big brother, Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the drawing here, to me, very courageous in a way, because you know how to use perspective. I've seen it, evidence yes. of it. And we have this, this like, uh, Nintendo kind of perspective. 100%, Ed. 100%, that's what I'm looking at. Double Dragon, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, any of these side-scrolling fighting games from arcade days. I like how that stuff looks. I can't remember what brought that to my attention again around this time, but I was like, that's a really cool way to have, like, characters, you know, for, for a scene like this. One mistake in this version, if you look around the dog, I was light, lightening up the street area, you know, and you can see on those paint strokes, which I think worked really well for, like, busted up asphalt, but around the dog, I didn't clean it up as much, so... That's something that'll be tightened up a little bit. It's funny because because like I, you call it out and we notice, but that could just be it's pretty debris small. on the asphalt. Yeah, I mean it's something I missed whenever I was proofing this, you know, to send off. So, yeah, it's it's not too bad, but it's something I am aware of. Um, when I was I was looking at a PDF and and like that, like 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 this looks like a wall. Yes. And then when you see the whole thing. It really works, man. Like, I wouldn't have the balls to do this. I probably saw something. Like I said, you know, I probably... This might have been after, uh, you know, going to an arcade or something where it's like, oh, man, that's really cool. Or, or, you know, looking up a reference for something and seeing that and being reminded of, like, I don't know how many dollars I spent in arcades playing those, those scrolling-type games. This weapon that he's carrying, this is a... Um, it's called a Monster Mall. 
I grew up in a rural area splitting firewood. This is what I used. It is a mean, mean weapon. I cannot imagine. This is like a cross between an ax and a sledgehammer. It's one piece of cast steel handle and head, all of it. It's probably 15 pounds or so. This is a weapon of just violence. <laughs> And obviously, he's kind of that road warrior type, uh, one man ga half one man gang, half road warrior. Heads up, Axel! I love it. <laughs> give, give total credit to Brian for that one. <laughs> um, breaking the panel. This is uh, something when I was learning to make comics. You would see dynamic moments of like breaking a panel, and always with caution of like, when do you do this? Don't do it too much. It's got to make sense. It should read well. So. Uh, kind of a directional device i thought with the triangle of the of the axe going over his head and then taking color out of him it's yellow as he's running away he recognizes her he's older he's been around he's had some battles on the street and whenever he realizes it's street angel he wants no parts of her so again trying to build that character if you're new to this character it's like oh she has some kind of reputation that scared this big tough guy away the, the title uh street angel to me feels like a really good like exploitation movie kind of title and this composition right here feels like a, it could be like a movie one sheet or something it's very striking uh super graphic i like the you know three color approach i try really hard to think of my panels that way again from cartoonists that i see you know and sometimes cartoonists will draw single panels you know jordan crane has done that a bunch chester brown and when you see it and they look good it's like all right man make make your panels you know Think about them both as a page, but also as individual compositions. So he runs away, leaving his monster maw up in the air. <laughs> and of course, it falls on poor Mohawk's <laughs> crotch. Um, that was a fun sequence. That this, this one has some parallels to the original. And you can see some of the choices, little storytelling moments, trying to have him recognize... Uh, trying to depict his mood change, yeah. you know, from being like, I'm going to, you're going to get it now to like, uh oh. No crotch shot, you know, that's something that comes in the, in the second version. So, like, just little bits of like, hey, this would be funnier. This is not written, you know, this was drawn, and I was like, oh, yeah, of course, have the hammer fall on him. Now, uh, this is something that we've talked about in conversation, something you brought up uh, before, and I've never really had, like, you went. You got, like, uh, a degree in design or some, some shit, right? So, like, you were telling me about, like, when you... Like, some sort of, like, rule of threes when it came to, to color or, or like... Rule of three is, is in almost everything. You, you know, if you're going to repeat... Yeah, color in a design, you put it on there three times. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, I've just never heard that. I mean, of course, the rule of threes in general, but, like, I just notice it right there, even though there's a little there. But, like, three big blotches of yellow... And then a very static, we're, we're kind of back to the status quo now, dealing with, with what we started with in the beginning of that scene. Um, and in case you forgot it, there's the reminder. You know, show the flyer again. So it's back to reality, and uh, poor Jesse has to, has to do what, what's right. Do the right. right thing. Yeah. So we cut to um, Twilight now. So again, scene change, you see the backgrounds of the panels change, try to differentiate them from what happened before, create some, some sense of different time period, and, and of course, Twilight. And you're clearly working in spreads Yes, uh, yeah. throughout this whole book. Yeah, definitely. This, um, this gradation in the background is, is pretty steady the whole way down, so like you have yellow clear at the base, but it, it goes all the way through as the background for this, this page. Um, this one is, is relatively similar to the original. There were some ideas I really liked. And as they're getting closer, I'll tell you one change. I actually love this lighting on, on her. Um, but one change is the dog is walking. And in the new version, she's constantly carrying that dog. That dog really is like her baby, her best friend. And I, I think that's a characterization difference between the original and the new one. But as they get closer, the dog starts squirming because it's recognizing its neighborhood. You know, it's getting close to home. The whole time she's telling it, you don't have to go. I don't know what you ran away from. You know, really projecting, perhaps, onto the dog. But the dog gets down excited and takes off and, and her following. No skateboard anymore. Also something that, that she lost. This is, this is, this is a tough issue for, for poor Jesse. Um, they get home. The dad and the daughter. We thought about making this bell. And this being, Belle is one of her friends from, from other stories. And we thought about making this character Belle, and this would be like how they first met. 
but for different reasons chose not to you know this is this is a gorgeous panel thank you and i can't imagine like did this take a little effort probably yeah like it looks like that was that was worked on like because it's so beautiful it doesn't look lay overly labored i'm just saying it looks kind of perfect and i don't know if you could get that right on, on one shot i probably didn't get it right on one shot but ed i'm sure you've had this like whenever you're doing sketches you'll get a like a sketch will sort of get nailed almost accidentally right yeah. you're trying to figure something out and then you look back or you take a minute and when you come back to it it's like that's it that's the right one um and it's almost accidental it's why we do sketches and roughs and layouts and stuff and so you see the spotlights on them that's where all the light is and she's off to the side i mean well here it is like there it is it worked out the first time like yeah much 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 better in the second one much more life They're paying attention to the dog. When they look up, she's gone. And so is his sandwich. <laughs> so her payment for returning the dog, her reward is that sandwich, I suppose. Just a half a sandwich, too. Yeah, and even missing one bite. But she's been looking for food throughout the issue, so at least she gets a little bit of something. Uh, their focus is on the dog, and where'd she go? Who, who knows? She's kind of an urban legend, um, which is part of what we explore with Street Angel is... It's hard to tell exactly what you're seeing, where the truth lies, what her real story is, who Street Angel is. You know, she's a ninja, so like Batman, it's a character that people might hear legend of, but you don't interact with a lot. You realize, like, we're taking that screenwriting course, and and the idea is that there's like five acts to to a television drama, and the fifth act is sort of like the climax is over and it's just like that quick drop off resolution and I think that that's where we're at right here with this the epilogue yeah the epilogue was added whenever we realized like it's clearly it's the dog story that's how this epilogue came to be where it's like well let's see the dog back in its element home happy you know safe um, back where it belongs and and you see the dog's kind of playing a little bit with that collar and and you know he had she had a tough tough adventure out there and she's feeling that toughness a little bit until uh her, her friend comes in and snaps her out of it. And then that's the end of the comic, but it's not the end of the comic book. This was a, uh, a one-pager just giving more information. I think that's pretty normal if you're going to hopefully get in front of some new people. Here's some background on the character, and it talks about that idea of, like, who is she? Is she even human? She's this urban legend. Um, fooling around with uh, Love Street Angel, where can you get more listing, like, what other Street Angel exists? little bios for who we are what we've read lately follow pretty normal stuff the only standout is this is magenta 100 percent. so you have white which is just the uncoated paper and then you have magenta which means you can back the type out this is a little bit of a technical thing but if you're doing uh, four color printing and you're reversing type if there's any slippage on the printing that can kind of muddy up your type and make it a little bit harder to read if it's if it's negative it's backed out like that by doing one color, you have no chance of that slipping. Genius. And also, it's like a spot color. You know, you get a real nice concentration. And for the printing nerds out there, I think it shows up a little bit. You can see where the, the ruler, you know, like this is a little bit lighter. It's not an even coat. Um, oh. that, that's the cost of doing business. Some of them, I'm sure, are perfect. Some may be overprinted. Uh, but this is what happens. You know, you do a big print run and print gets the ink gets thin and, and different things happen yeah it's not even visible it's not visible from where i'm sitting and it's you can't quite see it on the cam i don't think yeah well take my word for it this was something when i was doing aphrodisiac that i would go to lengths to try to make like uneven uh coverage for for ink and stuff uh advertisement for ninja tech which at this point has been published image had a couple of ads that they would run a nice big Street Angel ad with a glowing endorsement from uh, Brian K. Vaughn, Paper Girls, and he's, Saga writer. He's a kayfaber. He's cool. Uh, Street Angel Volume 1, he has a letter in it. So Brian K. Vaughn and I have, have kind of uh, corresponded a little bit for a while, and a big fan of him, obviously. This is going to be the cover of the trade, right? Yeah, this started out as just a promotional image, and it just kept getting good feedback um, from shop owners, from fans. Uh, from from friends of mine and so it's kind of evolved and it's and it this will this is what the cover is based on there's a little bit of changes and some updating but uh ostensibly this is the cover for street angel deadly squirrel live some of the typography is different but yeah and it's very organic the development of that by popular demand as they say ed dig and street angel goes to juvie the other hardcover that i re released this year released it um right around the time of the free comic book day event so smart move all of the Street Angel, all of those from the ads, uh, as well as Street Angel's dog, will be in Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. So 
I can't wait. I'll fix up, fix up my uh, mistake or two <laughs> and uh, be, be ready to go for everyone. Almost 300 pages of comics, huh? I am psyched. It's exciting to have it in there. You know, Ed, you, you asked about some of the choices working with the iPad. Um, it's color. You know, it, it, it's really part of the reason that I gravitated toward using the iPad was for the color and being able to work color line drawing all at one time, almost like painting, even though obviously it's digital, but you do get to compose all of those elements together, which was really fun. And in a lot of ways, technically, I look at the Street Angel series as my color book. You know, this is where I got to do whatever color ideas I had, and they're all going to be in that in that collection. And I think it's going to look great on a, you know, on a flip through. And uh, compared to the way a lot of comic books look, I'm trying my best to kind of really capitalize on the characteristics I love in superhero comics I grew up reading, which was bright colors, and uh, and they're definitely on display in this one. Yeah, well, listen, man, this was super fun. Uh, I would like to go through other works of ours and continue these kind of commentary tracks, man, give that sort of insight, if not for our own uh, ego sake, to perhaps inspire some other cartoonists we know who, uh, who are out there who might uh, get a bug up their bum to uh, do the same thing, man. I when I first got a DVD player, my favorite thing were director commentaries. So I'm surprised there's not more of this with comics. You're right, Ed. We'll set uh, it off. more for us, and, and hopefully uh, more of the comics we love. Uh, some of those cartoonists will get active. Should we should we get out of here? Let's do it. All right, guys. Like, subscribe, and follow the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon. We'll notify you whenever we put new videos available. You can find cartoonist cafe merchandise at our spread shop. There's a link below the video to that. Hey, Jim, did you hear that door? I think your uh, Street Angel book it just got delivered. Give them their marching orders. Read more comics. <laughs>